What's up, everyone? I hope you're doing well, and welcome to another episode of Kelvin's Garage. If you're looking for a quick and easy way to make your car run more efficiently, I definitely recommend a spark plug change, especially if you haven't done it for a while. So today I'm going to show you how to change your spark plugs on your 2006 to 2011 8th gen Honda Civic. Now if you haven't changed your spark plugs in a while, it's that one maintenance item that I recommend that can make your car feel a whole lot different. It will make it run more efficiently, it will burn gas more cleanly, and everything about it will just run better. So today I'm not just going to show you how to change your spark plugs, I'm going to show you the newest, hottest, no pun intended, most advanced spark plug available today for the Honda Civic and maybe for many other cars too. Now this type of spark plug I had only just come across within the last couple months. Maybe it came out a little bit longer than that but I have been a little bit out of date as of late. Now this type of spark plug is not based on iridium or platinum like some older generations. This is based on the brand new ruthenium. Okay so ruthenium is the new technology now for spark plugs. Let's take a look at these brand new NGK Ruthenium HX spark plugs. So if you buy four, they come in a box just like this. Now I recommend to purchase these from Rock Auto. Okay, I'm not endorsed by Rock Auto, but I highly recommend Rock Auto for all of your car part needs. Uh, they're pretty, uh, cost-wise, they're pretty low. So I would say you're getting a great deal from Rock Auto. The shipping is, is pretty efficient you'll get it within a few days time and they usually have tons and tons of parts for all makes and models okay so i bought these four ruthenium hx ngk spark plugs for about eight dollars and 28 cents i believe on the rock auto website uh, so that's eight dollars and 28 cents each and i know that sounds like a lot of money but um for these brand new spark plugs this should be the cream of the crop the premium spark plug, it should be more expensive than the iridiums and the platinums and so forth. Okay, so this is for a 2006 Honda Civic LX and the part number is FR6AHX-S, stock number 94279. Okay, and so what's so great about these ruthenium spark plugs? To be honest, I'm not so sure. Um, so the claim is that they're much better than the iridiums. They last a lot longer. If you take a look at the box here, it says NGK Rustenium HX, the ultimate high ignitability spark plug for today's engines. Leading OE dual fine tip designs for optimal performance. Rustenium technology provides unparalleled durability. Okay, and we have a photo here of what they look like. We've got this double fine electrode versus the projected square platinum electrode. And I'm sure there's a lot more information on the internet which tells you all the benefits of ruthenium, especially on the NGK website. Okay, so let's take a look at one of these bad boys. So here is a spark plug. Okay, that's the box, the individually wrapped box inside. And when we open these up, you'll see that we have the spark plug. And if you've ever done the spark plug job before, you'll notice that it has a little card which protects the electrode portion of the spark plug. Okay, so we're just gonna pull the spark plug out gently like so. Okay. And we see there's that little cardboard uh, paper toilet paper roll type of thing that surrounds the electrode. And we'll just take a look here at the spark plug. So there it is, the premium spark plug. If we take a look here, I don't know if we can get the double V electrode, but uh, it's somewhere there, okay. This, this camera setup is probably not the best to take a look at it, but, but take NGK's word for it. This is a special electrode design. Okay, they're made in Japan, it says Rustenium, NGK all over it, and we're gonna 
replace our existing spark plugs with these new ones, I believe the ones that we have in the car right now are iridiums. So they're already a very, very high quality plug. So we're going to upgrade them with this even more high quality plug. Okay, so we have the spark plug out of the box and one of the things I wanna go over is how to install it, okay? So if you take a look at the box, it actually gives you instructions. And the important thing about these instructions is that I would rather follow these than the ones in the manual for the car because the car is a bit dated, you know, it goes back to 2006. Maybe the specs of those plugs are not what this plug should use. So I recommend always going by the instructions as shown on the plug box, okay? If we take a look here, the box basically shows how it's done. Okay, first of all, on the first picture here on the upper left, it says there's a picture showing a spark plug and some kind of instrument here. Now that's, that's a gapper, okay? So back in the olden days, what happens is that when you buy a new spark plug, you're actually supposed to insert a tool in there and gap the spark plug, which means you set the gap in between uh, the electrode and this, this, this piece right up top here. And uh, basically that is optimized for your vehicle. Now, because most new spark plugs are already preset from the factory, you don't need to do this, okay? So do not gap your spark plug. Okay, number two. Okay, there's a picture here that is also a little bit difficult to see here, but basically it shows some kind of a hang glider, some kind of a plane, okay? What that means basically is this spark plug is not meant for those applications. Only use it in your vehicle. Okay, so installation instructions. Basically it says here, pictorially, insert the spark plug here and screw it in by hand. So you notice here, they're, screw they're screwing it in by hand, okay? And basically, you screw it in until it's nice and firm against the head, okay? And once it's firm against the head, then you go an additional one half to two thirds on the torquing ratchet, okay? So you torque it down one half to two thirds. Okay, this is because the spark plug, right, has a little crush washer in between the nut portion and the head, and this one half to two thirds turn is meant to crush that washer just a bit to give it the right seal around the head. If you take another look at the spark plug, so here it is, and let's take a look at the details here. So again, we do not gap the spark plug. And number two, here's that little crush washer. Okay, so it'll go inside the head, and then once it's seated firmly by hand, you torque in an additional one half to two thirds turn, and that will crush this washer, give it a nice seal against the head. Now, another thing I, that I like to do is I like to add a little bit of oil here uh, on the threads, just a drop or two. And what that will allow me to do is put it in pretty smoothly. Because again, we're not actually using our hand. We can't really get our hand into the uh, cylinder head. What we'll have to do is we'll have to, by hand, use the extension and the socket to grab onto the spark plug and then turn that by hand so that it's seated before we torque down by one half to two thirds um, on the ratchet. Okay, so here are some of the tools that we're going to need to complete this job. Okay, so I've got the spark plugs. I've got a socket ratchet, okay. I've got an extension. Now this extension is a little bit longer than what you might need, but uh, have some kind of extension. We've got a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, with an adapter for use with this and finally we've got the socket for the spark plug now this spark plug socket is a little bit special in that you can see it's a lot deeper than a normal socket and there's a little rubber gasket in the back of it and now what that does is when you insert it over the spark plug it will allow you to grip the spark plug and pull it out of the cylinder head so if i can just demonstrate what will happen is that once we unscrewed, so what we'll do is imagine that this is the cylinder head and that's the old spark plug. What we'll do is we will reach in with our spark plug socket, okay? Fit it over the existing spark plug. And then once we're done unscrewing it, we will pull the old spark plug out very gently and without damaging the, the tip of the spark plug or the head of the engine. Okay, we'll pull it out of the engine like so. Okay. The idea here is that the spark plug socket grips the spark plug itself. 
and allows you to just pull it out of the cylinder head. Okay, then we'll remove our old spark plug, put it aside, take the new one, grip it in the same manner, and then screw it in. Okay, so we've got our hood popped open and you can see here that we are going to install the spark plugs here. So this is the location of the spark plugs behind these individual ignition modules. So what we'll have to do is we'll first unplug each of the ignition module cables and then we're going to unscrew each one of these nuts here and pull the ignition module out, okay? And then what we'll do is we will one by one remove a spark plug, set it aside and install a new one. Okay, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unplug each one of these wiring harnesses. So let's do that first. That's an easy job. Should be easy. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to unscrew each of the nuts on the DLI unit. This is where we're, we will use our 10 millimeter socket and our ratchet. Okay, there's one. Two. Three and Four, okay once we've broken each of the nuts we can just undo them by hand so starting with the first one we will undo this nut it will set it aside somewhere where we won't lose it okay and then we will pull off the igniter unit pull off the igniter unit and that's what it looks like okay we'll set this aside right here now if we take a look inside the spark plug chamber, you can see, maybe you can see it, but uh, there's a spark plug somewhere in there. So now we're going to take the socket and then we're going to replace it with the spark plug socket right here. Okay, just like that. And we're going to slowly and gently insert it into the cylinder head and then we can kind of feel for when it grips the uh, spark plug. And once it's in there, just give it a little bit of torque and it should come out. Okay, and that's it. So once you've unbroken it, I recommend that you just unscrew it the rest of the way by hand. Okay, just like so, okay. And if you've inserted this properly over the spark plug, it should come out just the way I illustrated previously. Okay, and it pull out the spark plug. Okay, and voila, there it is. Okay, the spark plug. Okay, and we'll set this aside and put in the new one. And this is the NGK Iridiums. We'll take a closer look in a little bit. Okay, well, one thing I like to do is arrange the spark plugs in order. So we'll just call this one, two, three, four, and we'll just put them in a row. There's a lot of analysis you can actually do just by looking at the plug. Uh, we won't do that here, but uh, We'll set it aside and maybe we can take a look at it in the future. Okay, now we're going to install the new spark plug. Okay, so here it is, the ruthenium. Take it out of the box. Now, whatever you do, do not drop that little piece of cardboard in the cylinder. I've done it a couple times in the past and it's not, it's not fun to fish out. Okay, but here's the spark plug. Okay, do not drop this piece of cardboard in there. Okay, we'll just set it aside very gently. Okay, right over here, put this cardboard aside. Okay, so now that we've got our Rustenium spark plug out, what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of oil around the threads here, and we're going to lower it into the cylinder head using the spark plug socket. Okay, just like that. Okay, so that's why I have this big jug of oil here. You don't have to use much, just one or two drops should be enough. Just a little bit with your finger, 
okay? I know it's not the most uh, eco-friendly way to do it, but we'll just do it like that, okay? So just put a little bit on the threads. Okay, not too much, but it'll burn off anyway. Okay, and then we're going to lower it into the chamber. Okay, wipe your hand and get a little dirty here. Okay, and then we are going to stick the plug back into the socket. Make sure the little washer inside grabs it. Okay, just like this. Okay, and by hand we are going to lower it into the chamber. Now be careful not to bang the electrode against the walls of the cylinder head. Okay, that's a no-no. Okay, but let's just put this inside. Okay, now we're screwing it in by hand. Okay, and now it's seated by hand. And we're going to take our ratchet and very gently go another half, okay? We'll be conservative, we'll do half. So, ratchets this way, we'll go one half turn. Okay, that's a quarter. And that's a half. Okay. And now we're just going to repeat the same process for the other three. If when pulling out the extension you lose the socket, that's okay. You might just have to fish it out with a pair of pliers. Okay, I got some long nose pliers and what we'll do is we'll fish out that socket now. Just have to stick that in there and pull the socket out. Okay. And now we will reinstall the ignition unit right here. We'll align this bolt with the hole here. Okay, and then we're just going to press this in gently. If it's a little dirty, clean it up. Otherwise, it can just be reinstalled as is. Okay, just like that. Press it in firmly. Okay, and then put the nut back on and torque it down. Work this down just gently like so. Okay, and then plug in the harness plug. Okay, and that's it. We're done with cylinder one. Now the process for all the remaining cylinders is exactly the same. And so we're just going to go through that quickly. Torque it down. One quarter. One half. Okay, put the ignition module back on. Put the nut back on. Tighten this down.
and put the harness back on. Okay, check all the other connections here, make sure everything's good, and we're done. Make sure you remove all the tools from the area around the hood. Sometimes it's easy to forget and then you put the hood down. So remember to take your pliers out, your ratchet and socket and extension out and so forth before you close the hood. Okay, so we are pretty much done. Here are the old spark plugs laid out. Cylinder one, two, three, four. You can tell that they've been through a bit of a workout here. Okay, so it was probably time to change them and the car should run a lot better now. But we can see here, if you wanna go and analyze each one of these spark plugs, that is definitely something you can do. Technically, if you wanted to clean these up and reuse them, you could probably do that too, but I like to use brand new parts. Gives a bit more pep and performance and uh, almost assures that the car is running at its optimum. And finally, don't forget to take this out for a test drive. Hear that purring. Spark plugs, oh yeah. Just one more note. I have to remind you guys that these are just spark plugs, okay? They are not going to give you 20 horsepower, okay? This is not Fast and the Furious with a Motec exhaust, okay? These are just spark plugs. If anything, they'll make your car run efficiently. efficiently. At the most, they will give you back what you lost with your crappy old spark plugs, okay? So don't expect huge performance gains. So after installing the Ruthenium HX spark plugs and driving around for several weeks, I have to say I did notice that there is a significant improvement in my car's performance. Now, one of the main things that happened is that it is much smoother than it used to be. So all the shifting, uh, downshifting, acceleration, everything was much, much more smoother than when I used my older uh, used spark plugs. So I have to say Ruthenium HX seems to be doing what is promising. In terms of power, I mean, if you can feel the acceleration, there's probably a little bit more power. Probably the spark plugs in conjunction with all the little other upgrades that I did recently uh, has improved the performance overall. But I do have to say Ruthenium HX does perform very well and I'm very happy with how it's doing in my car. The power band is smooth from zero all the way up to the top end. All right, so if you like this video, hit like, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Kelvin's Garage.